I know, I know. Another, another new backlight kit. Seems like there's a new backlight kit, like, every six weeks or so. Um, but here's the compelling feature about this backlight kit. Allegedly, there is no trimming required whatsoever to use it with a Game Boy Advance. And the, um, the LCD, the image on the LCD is still slightly bigger than OEM. Um, but it does not require a custom lens. I mean, you can still use one if you want. I don't see any cops around. But, um, here's what you get. You get a very, very thin, uh, adhesive gasket for adhering the lens to the, uh, or for adhering the screen to the, um, shell. You get this, which I assume is a spacer. I'll have to double check that. This may or may not have just been sitting on my desk. The uh, LCD itself, which does look strikingly similar to the one that we had in the uh, C screen. Huh, remember that? This thing turned out to be such a letdown. Um, oh, no, it is a different LCD. be the exact same size though. HJ3009 is the C screen. HJ3008 is this new screen. Anyway, sorry, still haven't done anything with this. Uh, the LCD and then the uh, magic conversion board itself. With your two ribbons, you have your 32 pin and then your 40 pin. And both of the ribbons have this integrated touch sensor that you use to control this thing. Now, I don't know, I assume button controls are planned, but I don't see any solder points on this specifically for that. Maybe that's what it these two are. There is a ground pad right there and then a uh, it goes to nothing. I don't know. Don't I mean don't quote me on that. It might not be that. But yeah. Interesting. You get a lot less stuff, but it's okay because you don't need as much stuff. So uh let's let's meet tonight's donor, shall we? This is a real special donor, uh, one that I've been saving specifically for a kit exactly like this. I'm going to set that off in the corner there. Yeah, that's right. I'm backlighting it finally. I'm surprised it took me this long, to be honest. So I bought couple of these things actually. Um, for those that aren't in the know of what this is, this is one of, I don't think it is the rarest, but it is one of the rarest uh, Game Boy Advance models um, to have ever been released. To my knowledge, it was only available in the Japanese Pokemon Center. And it is a, um, it, it's Pokemon themed, but it is one of the very few two-tone Game Boys ever to come out. Um, the only other one that I know of offhand would be the uh, Day Hawks Game Boy Advance. I'm talking specifically Game Boy Advance. I know there's that Lost and Limited Game Boy Color. Um, technically, there are quite a few SPs two-tone. Anyway. Due to the scarcity, these things regularly go for a few hundred dollars. So, when one popped up for a hundred, I jumped on that. Which is basically the going price of Game Boys right now, anyway. Um, but yeah, I don't know, it's really cool. If you look real close at the paint where it's wearing off, because unfortunately it's not in the greatest condition, you can see this green tint under it. 
I've never known for sure, but I've always suspected that these um, Latias, Latios, or Eon GBA special editions were always just made from leftover Celebi edition stock. Like they just, oops, forgot about that. There's another two-tone. Um, but it looks to be like the same base coat and then the shell itself underneath all the paint is the same color. So I'm guessing they just use this as a metallic base and then spray it over it with the red. Looks pretty cool. I'm, I've always been very pleased with it. Also comes with pink, pink buttons. Ooh, this is a 40 pin, so we get to test that. I didn't double check that before the video. I forgot to. So it's a good thing that worked out. Alright, I'm just going to pull this apart and get everything out of the shell to make sure I don't screw anything up. The button membranes are unfortunately not fun colored aside from the start and select. But I suppose it doesn't really matter because you never actually see them. Pop this screen out of here maybe. There it goes. this gasket on here. Stick it in something, probably. Just make sure I grab a shot of the front of the board because I uh, usually go back through my video after testing power and um, add notes to my spreadsheet. And sometimes I forget to get a clear shot and that always, always gives me a hard time. Anyway, let will set my power supply. 2.4 volts. And what's the game I usually test with? Pokemon Emerald? It's probably Pokemon Emerald. I'm going to test it with Pokemon Emerald. Oh, it's in the microphone. There it is. Same cart as usual. Oh, it did. Got to turn the power supply on. Uh oh, still not working. Oh, we might have to fix the power switch on this thing. Huh. And the screen's broken. <laughs> well, I guess uh, it's a good thing we're backlighting it anyway. To fix that before testing it. All right, fine, 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 fine. Move forward. I don't know, like 15 minutes. If you don't want to see me testing the uh, or fixing the power switch, you just want to see what's what with the kit. Yeah, there's a reason this Game Boy was a hundred bucks. Uh, I have never had this one open. The uh, headphone jack is giving me a little bit of a concern too, but we're gonna leave it since the audio was working. So, 
I've done videos on this before, uh, as have other people. Um, Burn Dog put out a really nice video somewhat recently on this, but for those intermittent power issues, the cause is a dirty power switch. And the fix is well, you gotta clean the power switch. But to do that, you gotta actually desolder this metal shielding on here to get it open. Which I am out of practice with. So as you can see there, these contacts should be nice and golden, but that is not how they appear. So let's fix that. My favorite method for doing so is take a um, paper tube cotton swab or cotton bud, whatever the hell you call them. Cut the Jesus thing in half because you want the tube itself. And I'm just going to get it a little bit wet with some isopropyl alcohol and rub it down in there. And you can see all that gunk coming off on the uh, cotton bud. And if we look at the power switch, which I'll have to move my light again so you can see, but it's a bit cleaner, at the very least. Just like that. And then I will go ahead and saturate the uh, actual bud side, some isopropyl, and then we will go over this switch real quick and clean off the wipers. Usually this step is unnecessary, so. I guess you can go ahead and skip it, especially because if you accidentally, if you accidentally um, get these at the wrong angle, you can break off the little metal wipers or the whole assembly can pop out of the plastic housing. And getting it back in is not only a pain in the butt, but if you lose it, your switch is donezo. I also like to, while I'm in here, give them just a slight bend, give them a little bit more uh, spring, if you will. And same thing with the shielding. I usually bend it a little bit accidentally upon removal, so I like to fix that by uh, bending the legs slightly inwards and then bending the top slightly inwards. So since I'm holding it upside down, it's basically a, a, uh, a W shape. You can see that. But that's it. I'm going to put it back together now. Despite being out of practice, I am getting quicker at this, though. I will say that. Unless I'm about to jinx myself. I said, like, 15 minutes. It's only been, like, four. We'll just solder that back down. I'm using my tweezers to hold it because, you know, soldering iron plus metal equals hot. But there we go. One of the most important things when doing this is you have to make sure that the shielding goes back on absolutely flush. Uh, if that doesn't go on flush, then your switch is gonna worse, work even worse than before. And 
Nobody wants that. Let's trade out now, shall we? We can get a baseline reading, and we can pop in the new kit, test it out, see what we get. Hey, look at that. Came right on, and we have a green light. And then I touched it, and it went red. Another thing that helps is... Um, Turn your power supply off or your batteries off. Actually, remove your batteries. That's that's what normal people say. And uh, actuate the switch a few hundred times. I'm not going to do a few hundred times right now, but. There we go. Now it's all the way over and I have a green light. out of that Pokemon Center into the overworld in the same place where I usually test and at 2.4 volts we are pulling anywhere from 105 to 127 milliamps not great but it's about on par the damage screen could be pulling a little bit more than usual. Probably not, but it could be. That's a number I expected though, so we'll call it good. Switch it off, and let's try out the uh, new screen. You always want to test your kit before installation. Um, two reasons. One, if it doesn't work, then you didn't waste all that time installing it. And two, that way you can rule out, if it doesn't work, that way you can rule out install as a uh, problem. Which I know a lot of people who sell these kits, they, uh, They always say to test your kit before installation. Or that they won't warranty a kit if it shows sign of installation and you try and return it. Which I totally get. I've seen what some people do to these poor things. And hey, came on. Does that work? No. Well, that works on a DMG. Go figure. My fingers are capacitative enough to actuate DMG buttons without the pad. Alright, so in the overworld here, I'm gonna set that down. I think I saw 162, 152, 154, excuse me. Nope, that was 152 to 179. Uh, 
Uh, but of course there is a touch sensor. Oh, so that is the max brightness, okay. 152 to 179. Alright, so this is brightness level 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. There's 6 levels. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. At the lowest, it pulls 135 to 162, 163. So it doesn't help much, but that is still a phenomenal result uh, when you consider beforehand we were pulling like 120 and now we're pulling like 160. That's pretty nice. Um, but before we go into assembling this, there is one more thing I want to do. Sorry if I sound a little bit distant. Uh, I was just pulling up the instructions. There is another mod that we can do for 40 pin Game Boys specifically. Now this backlight kit is solid, solder free in that you don't have to solder to install it, but if you're installing it in a 40 pin Game Boy, you can solder to get some uh, improved brightness. And um, honestly, I think the backlight looked, looked fine to me as it was, but Let's see what we can get, right? So, 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 so. I'm gonna pull that in. A wee bit. Bring my iron back up. What we want to do is see this part here, Q2, where my pinky's pointing. This thing. We want to short this pin on the left hand side over to this pin on the right on top. So solder from that to that. Now, it's not a particularly difficult soldering job, but it's, it is a very low component next to some very tall components. So if you're not up to it, um, I wouldn't recommend it because if you mess up this connector right next to the, uh, I guess that's a transistor or something. If you mess up the LCD connector, um, well, you're gonna ruin your Game Boy. You've also got this cart reader right here. You mess that up, you're ruining your Game Boy too. On the bright side, the LCD connector is replaceable. The um, cart reader, not so much. I think it would have been wise to put a smaller tip on my iron. The reasons I was just mentioning. I'm going to go ahead and tin these. One thing we could do to make this easier Hang on. I think I see some easier spots to get to if you're uh, nervous about that. So, multimeter and beep mode. This pin looks like it connects to that capacitor. Indeed it does. So you can use the right pad of this C14 right next to it. And then this pad, this pin right here looks to be connected to this big old plane right here. Uh, which may or may not be a ground. No, it is not a ground. That is probably a voltage rail. Okay, disregard. There are no good components to solder to. I think it goes to right here. Yep. Hmm. I'd have thought for sure it was that five volt rail. Yeah, I have no idea what it is. Okay, disregard. That capacitor is still an option, but you still gotta
figure out something to do with that uh, small pin right next to the CD connector, which I suppose doesn't actually solve any problems now, does it? Insanely small, but we can make it work. We just got to put in the work. We can get this thing stripped. Okay, that's not what I wanted to happen, but that'll work. <laughs> So the adhere here, clean your iron. The adhere here. I'm just gonna hold the Jesus thing. Is we will solder one side. Just like that. And then bring that around to get to the other side. And we'll just clip off the excess. And to double check our soldering before I trim that excess, because I found those extra points, we can see that this capacitor connects up to that. Cool, 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 cool. Now we just take the flush cuts. Snip that off and I will save that because I have a feeling I'll need to do something like that again. And there you go. Just like that. Ooh. I should have measured the brightness before doing that. I'm going to have to undo that or just not measure that. What are you stuck on? Oh yeah, I can see that that is brighter indeed. Uh, it is quite a hit to battery though. Alright, so in the overworld, let's see, I think I saw 218 to 239, and we're probably on the max brightness, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, nope, I 
I missed one. Okay. Oh, but it goes down to about what it was before. I see 143 to 174. And I'm just list listing off the peaks and valleys. Um, and then I'm just going to average that out. Very interesting. All right. Oh, you know what? Let's test one more thing. One, two, three, four, five, six. Let's see if it retains the brightness level. does not it always resets back to full brightness so that's kind of a disappointment but mm, eh. at the end of the day it's really not that big of a deal but just something to keep in mind okay let's actually put this thing together now shall we only half an hour into this video So this comes with this. Now normally it's best to uh, squeeze this in and then just push the center out through the front, but I'm not removing this lens, so we're just going to leave it. I believe the, uh, yeah, the thin side goes on the left, the thick side goes on the right. Tick. I'm gonna pop this out in advance. Oh, you know what? Real quick. Let me grab this. Because it is a question that I'm sure will come up. IPS ready shell. Yeah, that fits in there, no problem. You don't have to mod that. Um, it is gonna need like a positioning bracket or something in an IPS ready shell though. But it does fit. I'm not even going to peel off the adhesive yet on this. I'm just doing a uh, a dry run, as it were. Also, the kit did come with this little clear bit of plastic. What is that for? That goes in the corner, I guess. I guess those go down here. You can stick those into the, can't even see framing, you fuck. Those go down into the corner. It's probably supposed to come with two, but I may have lost one because I wasn't expecting them. And I just don't even see that on my desk right now. Um, but it's an easy enough part to replace. It's very not complicated. It is nine and a quarter by fifteen by one point five. And uh, I'll go make another one because I lost. 
mine. I don't know. You can probably do it with just one. Um, I just gotta stick it into the corner. Let me unplug this. Because this is supposed to go all the way over to the left, I believe. Yep, this goes all the way over to the left and then on top of the spacer. So you would line it up, you put the spacer into the corner like that, and then you line up that side with the top of the spacer. But it would be nice to have two of them so you can get that straight, because it wants to wants to fuck off on me. All right, we're gonna have to put down at least one side of the adhesive. See, I normally go back through these builds after I'm done with the video and actually take my time with this stuff and, you know, clean it, get everything centered and positioned happy which is why I tend to leave the adhesive till later. Because if I do it on film, it ain't gonna come out right. It says you don't have to trim, so we're gonna try that. Even though I think it would really fit a lot better if we trimmed off these little nubbins on the bottom. Hell, I'm tempted to just send it and see. I'll just use that for the time being though. Quick thing. The uh, apparently this touch sensor is too large from the uh, factory, and the recommended fix is to just cut the darn thing. Uh, so they want you to cut the side on the GBA. Oops on my scissors. Just cut it in half down to the wire. And it's a touch sensor so you can do that no problem. If that were any other part of the ribbon and you cut it, you're, um, well, you're going to be looking for a 32 pin Game Boy to try again. So just put it that way. may have just unseated the LCD, which is kind of disappointing, but is that supposed to go in that hole? I mean, I guess. No. This would slam shut on it. I don't know where that's supposed to go. Are you supposed to fold it up in front? 
Let's look at the instructions. So yeah, it is supposed to go in front, but you're also supposed to tape it down, and I didn't do that either. So we're gonna hope for the best. And remember, when I turn this around and turn it on, that my LCD was not properly centered. Nor is there anything other than a cotton swab holding it in. soldering anymore. Alright, well two is good enough for now. Like I said, I'm taking it apart again. Um, batteries. Batteries. It works. There you go. Touch sensor works really nice right there. I'm surprised. It's really not in a good spot, but hey. Let's, instead of fussing around in Pokemon Emerald, let's jump right to the uh, goods here. So, if it's positioned right, I'm sure it's a little bit better. Um, I'm using the, the 160p test suite, which is just a port of the 240p's test suite to Game Boy Advance. Um, this is the linearity test, which, if your circle appears circular, then your screen is reproducing shapes accurately. Uh, convergence, none of the lines should be, um, they should all be parallel, perpendicular. Uh, which is the other one? Sprite, that looks pretty normal to me. I don't know if the camera's picking this up properly, because it doesn't look like it is in the preview. I don't see any weird artifacting. Uh, well, that's not true. There's this little dot right up there and this line right there, but I don't remember if that's normal for this test. Scrolling looks pretty good. Uh, 
I'm very pleased with what I see so far. Oh, let's let's try this one out, shall we? So the point of this test here is um, see if you've got any backlight bleed, which I'd have to turn off all my lights to really test properly, but or at least for it to pick up on the camera that I'm testing properly, but it looks pretty good for uh, for me. Yeah, I am very happy with what I'm seeing so far. Just real quick, give it the old once over. Oh, I should test Link's Awakening, huh? I always test Link's Awakening. Now should be no exception. It's not on here. Son of a... Alright. Everdrive. It's on the Everdrive. Uh, I scrolled right past it, didn't I? Zelda.gb Nope, I wanted the other one. There's probably a way to reset that without doing what I just did, but oh well. So what I'm looking for here when I scroll and see if there's any artifacting from this fence that gets um, repeated throughout the screen. Bring the brightness down so you can see that a little bit better. And like usual with the like usual with the last few Game Boy kits, at least I'm seeing no pixel overdrive artifacts, so it's looking pretty darn compelling. I think. Another interesting thing. Now, I don't know if this is a characteristic of this LCD itself, or if this is a characteristic of uh, that someone programmed into this kit, but there's a lot less flickering with this guy's chain than usual. It's actually appearing how it's supposed to appear on hardware. I don't know how well the camera's picking that up, but it's, it is still flickering a little bit, but it's really hard to see. It's actually appearing transparent like it's supposed to, and that's, that's actually really cool. I'm very okay with that. Oh, you know what? I am seeing a little bit of artifacting right in the middle here. I have to look for it. Very pleased with what I'm seeing so far. Be interesting to see if this kit was programmed specifically to pass that test, though. <laughs> I wouldn't put it past them. Um, and oh, you know what? Let's do the reset test. Degree bars, scrolling bars. So, like usual, I've explained this many times, but what this does, when that S passes the left side of the screen, the S in scrolling, uh, 
the Game Boy is issuing a screen reset command. And what we're checking for when that happens is to see if there's any additional frame drops or screen tearing. And I see none. Uh, of course, there is the one dropped frame when the screen resets. That is normal expected behavior. And there's just no getting around that. That's, that's how a reset works. Um, you're literally telling the hardware to drop the current frame and move on to the next one. Um, but some of the other kits will have uh, some screen tearing after the fact, or they'll drop the frame and then the next 60 frames for whatever god-awful reason. And I'm seeing none of that. So yeah, this is, this is a phenomenal kit. I am very impressed with what I'm seeing so far. Uh, and the fact that you don't even have to mod your uh, Game Boy to install it, that's... I mean, like, you don't have to cut it up. It's still obviously a mod. But, yeah, this is nuts. I'm, I'm very impressed. I guess at this point I am going to go make that extra spacer and finish this install. And uh, I will catch you guys next time. I'm going to give a quick shout out to Retro Game Repair Shop for shooting this kit my way to check out. Super excellent. Um, oh, before I go, because I think it will be interesting since I made the comparison earlier. To the C screen. Now, I've seen some other people who got this kit before me. They've complained about how cool the colors are as opposed to being warm. The funny playing kits and the other kits that use that same LCD tend to be on the warm side. Uh, and my complaint with the C screen, besides the power usage, was that it was way on the cool side. And you can even see from the, uh, the video that this is even cooler than that one. And then here is a... F it's not a funny playing, but it's using one of the funny playing LCDs. And you can see that this one does indeed appear warmer. The whites are a little bit more white as opposed to blue, but nowhere near as bad as uh, C screen over here. But so yeah, it's not perfect. There's always trade-offs, but seriously, unless the two are side by side, I don't even notice the color. So I think, I'm thinking this kit might be the new way to go. Anyway, thanks for watching guys. Have a good night. You could use a custom lens if you want, but if you hold it at just the right angle you get the full screen anyway when it's actually in position. Uh, but from some angles it does get slightly cut off. Because it's slightly bigger than stock. But one quick addendum before I leave for good. Um, before I run out and go get some smokes. Uh, if you don't trim the little nubbins on the inside of the screen, uh, kind of like if you were doing an AGS 101 mod, the LCD does not sit flat in here. So if you look at the bottom left corner, look at the gap between the, the LCD and the lens, and then top right corner, much less of a gap. So. I'd recommend cutting, at least, or use an IPS-ready shell, but I guess you really don't have to mod if you don't want to. Never mind, it did come with three, uh, or two, rather. I'm, I just had a dumb.